As we begin the proceedings today, I invite Mr. Jagmeet Makkar to take us through yesterday's proceedings. Mr. Makkar is Director, Skills Plus, and Immediate Past, IMEI Chair, Indian Maritime University. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you had your breakfast. All right. It's absolutely a pleasure to be here. Uh, it's not very easy to summarize the excellent speeches of yesterday and a very thought-provoking <coughs> panel discussion followed by the question and answer session. I've been given officially 10 minutes, but I think we have got late further, so I can take another 5 minutes. So that makes it 15 minutes. I will try my best to focus on the key points and extract some action uh, points out of it uh, to make this summary more useful. Following the Indian, that is the Bhartiya tradition of lighting of lamp signifying removal of darkness, ignorance and spreading the Almighty's grace and divine energy Tam so ma jyotir gamaya. Captain Kamal Chadda welcomed everyone. Taking the guests, thanking the guests who traveled from far and wide to attend this ATPI Marex Global Shipping, Manning and Training Summit 2023. The presence of the industry's personalities showed the care of shipping, care for shipping with its constant demands and challenging adaptations. Varuna Award winner, Captain Rajesh Tandon, in his brief address found this conference topic to be most pressing and relevant. Industry is undergoing significant transformation driven by automation, digitalization, artificial, artificial intelligence and green technologies. This is some of the, these are some of the things that he spoke of. And it is estimated that approximately 800,000 seafarers work worldwide require new skills. This highlights an opportunity for India to emerge as a leading force in global seafarer supply. India can position itself as a key contributor of, to the evolving shipping landscape and aligning, while aligning with technology changes necessitated by the UN SDG goals. He highlighted that to seize this opportunity, India must prioritize collaboration, mind this word, collaboration, you will have this word very much uh, up in every second or third para because that is the key word here. Collaboration amongst the various stakeholders including but not limited to government agencies, shipping companies, training institutions and industry associations. <clears throat> By developing standardized training frameworks, promoting lifelong learning and fostering partnerships, Bharat can establish herself as a global hub for skilled seafarers as well as show professionals to meet the demands of an evolving industry. Her Excellency Yasel Burilo, the Ambassador and the Consul General of Panama, focused on the importance of shipping and highlighted that there were about 45,000 Indian seafarers working on the Panamanian fleet. Her Excellency was very conscious of the well-being of seafarers and their families, especially during COVID and the psychological support provided by the flag. <coughs> she also shared two good news. One being the election of Mr. Arsenio Antonio Dominguez Velasco, the first Latin American Secretary General of the International Maritime Organization and whose main commitment, she said, 
was to put the people and the planet first. The other good news was that the Panama Canal operations was returning back to normalcy after one of the driest period <coughs> due to climate change. The Director General of Shipping, Mr. Shyam Jagannathan IES, gave an overview of the regulatory aspects up to 2030, starting with the importance of regulations, especially as to what is acceptable and what is not. His snapshot of the role of DG shipping and among other, supporting 590,655 590, seafarers, 156 MTIs and 650 other users. He's, he also spoke of the major port authorities at 2021, inland vessels at 2021 and punch prun the five pledges for developing India and elimination of the colonial mindset. He also briefly outlined the Maritime India Vision 2030, Marine Incidents and Crisis Management Team at Director General of Shipping, which comprises of Nautical Advisor, Chief Surveyor, Additional DG, Chief Ship Surveyor, Nautical Surveyor, Casualty and Response, and the DDG crew. He emphasized that safety and security of the seafarers is paramount and provided an overview of what would constitute regulation in 2050. As your summarizer for the event, I am happy to update that a significant reform by the present day government in yesterday's news about embarking on complete removal of cabotage law for coastal shipping and the emergence of a new category of fleet owners in the gift city, which offers a 10-year tax holiday for the fleet operators. Thereafter, we had Dr. Mrs. Malini V. Shankar, IAS retired, Vice Chancellor of the Indian Maritime University. Referring to the latest Manning Annual Review and Forecast Report by Drury, the Vice Chancellor mentioned that in 2023, the shortfall in the supply of officers had widened to a deficit equivalent to about 9% of the global pool. She mentioned that while this raises the fears of manpower cost inflation, it also presents an opportunity for the youth who aspire to join the maritime workforce. And as for the demographics, Indians are the youngest, right? So that could be a great opportunity. She mentioned about the future skills and competency needs that include soft skills in leadership and management and bridging programs that complement the IMO-based education. Development of maritime autonomous ships and systems, the MAS, leads to several requirements. At IMU, we see mentioned that we run competitions such as the IMO mock, which are very useful and the many of you uh, support that and contribute to that. She then laid emphasis on the quality of faculty and training beyond just classrooms. Fatigue of seafarers, reduced manning, short stay in the ports, multitude of regulations, all such factors leading to increased stress for the seafarers, which must be taken into account by all of us. She highlighted the role of the industry and the academia which they can play through joint efforts in maritime education and research and ended her second speech with an optimistic role note that G20 has proven that India is on a roll. The Maritime India Vision 2030 is a document that has highlighted the prospects and action points to take us to 2050 and beyond. It is up to us to unite and make that happen. Then we had our chief guest, Captain Bilal Ahmed. Captain Bilal Ahmed's speech as the chief guest of the summit brought out certain pertinent points and his strong personal beliefs too. He spoke about COVID and cooperation, focusing on the sacrifice made by the seafarers, how the crisis brought the industry together. That was the positive aspect of the COVID, that it brought the industry together. 
India was a shining example of how to bring all stakeholders together, including the government of India, DG Shipping, and Ministry of Foreign Affairs in particular, to address the crisis and facilitate the crew changes. Internationally, INEC, ITF, and ICF worked closely to create a joint action body that created sufficient pressure on the governments, IMO, ILO, local authorities, charters to assist movement of seafarers. And this global cooperation lives on. This cooperation between ITF, ICS and IMEC shall tackle upcoming challenges in the industry. And IM MOU has been signed to work on crew training, crew welfare, and work on UN just transition goals. This is and will be a game changer in facing the challenges in our industry. Captain Bilal believes that, I'm going to quote some of the very wonderful sentences that he did speak, and he is uh, very fond of those, and he would like you to listen to them again. Our industry is at a crossroad. With technological innovation driving the modern shipping, coupled with climate change pressure and the UN sustainability goals. Global maritime industry is forced to talk about and act on global warming and transition to net zero world of shipping. Whatever technology is finally evolved and adopted, the people who will execute these changes are the seafarers, he says. Seafarers are the frontline soldiers on these unprecedented changes in the maritime industry. We must all work together to support them in training and improving their welfare. And finally, as his concluding remarks, he very passionately said, India is a global leader in supplying the most competent seafarers. It is important India considers more active role in shaping the future of seafarers, not only for Indian seafarers, but also for the rest of the world. Indian leadership in seafarer training must take front seat by extending support to countries who lack competent trainers. And followed by that, these wonderful pearls of wisdom by each and every of our speakers, we had the Just Transition 2030 first panel, and there we had Captain Alok Sharma uh, giving a prelude to the panel discussion. In his very passionate prelude to the first panel, Captain Alok Sharma said that an urgent need is, uh, urgent action is needed to limit global warming to 1.5 degrees centigrade or the future generation may not be able to enjoy the planet as the last generation. Outcome of more than 1.5 degrees centigrade may lead to climate variance, increase in frequency of heat waves, droughts, storms, rise in, rise in water levels of about up to meter to two meters, and that would lead millions of people to be rehabilitated. To avoid catastrophe, we must switch to a sustainable net zero future. However, this transition has to happen in a fair, and inclusive way. Shipping is responsible, as we all know, for transporting 90% of global trade and supplying the world with food, fuel, medicines, and goods. The global shipping industry accounts for only 3% of global greenhouse emissions. In volume terms, it is still 1 billion tons of CO2 injected into the environment. And some people say, okay, 3%. I'm adding my words to it. Hello, forgive me for that. Just 3%. If we did nothing, by 2050, it would be 17% because the population is going to go up, the trade is going to go up, the number of ships are going to go up. So we might not rest on our laurels and say only 3%. I think we are moving in a direction in a proactive way. For discussion, he said his pointers for the moderator, panel and the audience would be putting seafarer front and in the center, including that such gatherings should get more seafarers for discussion. Yesterday we had only one, 
we should get more seafarers. Regularly, the regulatory framework will involve more participation, looking beyond and getting involved in the research work and invest in the mental uh, well-being and mental health efforts. Thereafter, we started with the panel discussion, uh, Captain Alok Sharma, Captain Bilal Ahmed, Mr. Steve Cotton, Captain Naoki, Naoki Saitosa, uh, Helio Wilson, uh, through his recorded message, and that was very professionally moderated by Captain Rajesh Tangan. Rajesh laid the foundation for the discussion and had highlighted the gap and thus opportunities which existed with India having about 20% of the world population but supply only 12% of the seafarers. And we have a huge gap in terms of gender too, so we can have more women coming <coughs> on board the ships. So it's, it's not a big deal for us to provide the manpower. Helio Wilson joined us through his recorded message saying that the International Chamber of Shipping with 80% of world's merchant Time's up, Chitmeet Makar. Okay, but please give me five minutes. Because all these points will be very, very important. How to address the collective of global challenge, lessons learned from the past and future is not only compliance. This is what I really loved what uh, Helio said. It's, uh, future is not only compliance, but an evolution in the way we move ahead. To address the health and well-being, both physical and mental, we at ICS, not Chartered Ship Brokers, Chamber of Shipping, the IMEC, leading voices and stakeholders from industry are working together to ensure that transition is safe and seafarers' role to meet the requirements is very well thought of. He also talked about the Manila Conference, President Marcos Jr.'s vision, and then moved to India, playing the pivotal role his reference to the re recent notable strides by the country in terms of a very successful G20 summit is a perfect example of India increasing its geopolitical standing. The Chandrayaan-3 moon landing drew applause from the audience, while also mentioning that India will need to continue to make strides into the fast approaching 2030. India needs to invest in this transition and has a role cut out for it too. Then Steve Cotton from ITF, with a very quick survey of the audience and the questions, Steve made an observation that we in shipping are a bit traditional, old fashioned, and as we heard, professional, very well educated. Challenges and disasters flying, flying in every week, such as floods, the Morocco earthquake. Steve emphasized that we are all part of a society that has the confidence of tackling these challenges. Public looks, it, looks at it as a supply time and not of shipping. The complete supply chain, they look at it and not just shipping. And this is where he was leading to uh, the reputation and, and the bad name that the industry does have because people were not getting their supplies in time during COVID. Training of young people for alternate fuels and other challenges that was something he pointed out. India has a challenge that keeping, keep recruiting young men and women for the industry because industry is, economy is booming and managing the expectations of these young boys and girls for the, to become the highly competent seafarers and the career option in maritime would be a challenge. So there is a work cut out for us to do. Sato San uh, from class NK, very empathetically mentioned that not so many classification societies have maritime training department and they are more into technical discussion dealing with safety, safety and safety and not management discussion. Class NK looks at the management discussions. With the challenges coming from decarbonization and digitalization, just technical discussion is not good enough for safety in the future. So class NK are going to be involved in human resources and operations management discussions. Where the ship owners consider beyond, going beyond the usual training and would consider additional training procedures and the assessment 
for maintenance and operation for alternate fuel vessels, then Class NK can support education and training through their new operation and maintenance procedures. So, as your summarizer, I am not going into what was discussed in the panel discussion because the panel discussion, all of them together, because a lot of points would be very common points, so I would be looking at the other panel discussions during the day and put it all together and present you the action points in the evening today. But just very, very quickly, I think it was a good strategy for the moderator to give time to the panelists to express their views that I have summarized above. I will summarize the panel discussions at the end of the day, as I mentioned, along with other panels. However, the questions that were very pertinent, and I would like to leave them with you again, <coughs> just for discussion when you meet each other. Seafarers having a voice in the adaptation or adoption of new technologies and operation, operational changes that directly impact their work environment. Initiatives that seafarers representatives can champion to reskill and upskill the workforce to remain relevant and secure in their roles. Collaboration. How, where and focused action points with regards to creating a supportive and safe work environment that fosters well-being and mental health. Ship management companies actively facilitating seamless integration of new technologies into vessel operations while addressing potential challenges for the seafarers. As Alok had mentioned, seafarers are at the center. They are not just by the way existing there. And collaboration between shipboard teams and shore-based management, particularly in the era of remote monitoring and control. Finally, collectively raising the profile of the seafaring career, its perception and reputation. There is far more opportunity in our sector rather than just seafaring. The maritime industry as a collective offers the highest number of jobs in India, currently estimated at 6.2 million people. And finally, there is a question of skill arbitrage versus cost arbitrage. And the one sentence that brings it all together is collaboration and the combined will of the industry stakeholders, regulators, policy makers and academia to provide all that our frontline seafarers who are in the center is all that we need. How we go there? Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Makkar, for a very precise and detailed uh, summarization. I would request you to please come on stage to be felicitated. And I call upon uh, Captain uh, Kuman <coughs> to please felicitate him.